Okay. It's not exactly as advanced as a transporter room, or as a tricorder, or as a holodeck. All of those of you Star Trek fans know what I'm talking about. But a car that flies and sits in your own garage has been a fantasy of science fiction for as long as I can remember. I don't know, every second cover of Mechanics Illustrated or all those science fiction comic books we used to see in the 50s and even in the 60s had one of these on the cover. So the question is, will it ever come to fruition? And here is Carl Dietrich from Woburn, Massachusetts and MIT. He's an otherwise sensible looking young man. And he's here to tell us why his company, Terra Fugia, mm -hmm. is going to be the one to actually bring this idea to market. Well, thank you all for, uh, for coming out and coming back from lunch uh, this afternoon. I want to take a little bit of your time to talk about flying cars and to talk about them seriously because they have the potential to revolutionize personal transportation, personal freedom. Uh, things, these are very big terms that we tend to throw around uh, somewhat glibly, but they actually have, they are the things that enable society to advance. Um, if you think of the world before the automobile existed and compare it to the world after the automobile was put into to widespread production, um, the changes that came about, the economic advancements, they came about because we put freedom into the hands of the individual. We put capability to travel, to go where you want to go, to influence more people in a given amount of time. We put the ability for you to visit your parents a state away. Uh, we changed people's lives with that. And what we're talking about with the flying car is something that is no less significant. It's increasing the potential of each and every one of us to impact more and more people, personally, to put yourself in a different situation. And that has the potential to revolutionize the way people live uh, and fundamentally alter quality of life around the world. Um, it's a big problem. It's one that's been tried for almost a century now, and we still haven't seen it happen yet. So I'm going to talk a little bit about our approach to solving this problem of making a practical flying car. But before that, I want to tell you a little bit of background about myself. Um, I was a kid, like probably many of you up here, that was fascinated with high-tech stuff. I loved building things. I loved um, little balsa wood gliders, things like that. I loved, I must have watched Top Gun 500 times. You know, I, I, I watched the Jetsons, I watched Back to the Future. I was, I was into all of it. Um, it was inspirational for me. It made me go out and figure out, well, why don't we have this stuff? Why, don't, why can't I go out and buy a flying car today? Why can't my parents buy a flying car today? Um, and so I went off to MIT to learn about how we could actually make this practical, how we could make this happen. Um, along the way, I picked up a bug. I started learning about entrepreneurship. And MIT has a fantastic environment to help foster entrepreneurship and uh, really grow it among the ranks of, of people there. And in high school, I had actually been enthusiastic enough about flying and aviation that I went out and became a pilot. So I kind of had a certain intuitive understanding for what the practical barriers are, why I don't go fly every time I want to, I don't know, go to the next state over, why most of the time I, I drive there. It's, it's not very practical. And we started Terrafugia setting out to kind of take the first baby step in the direction of making a practical flying car by making an airplane for pilots that had the ad additional capability of driving down the road and parking in your garage. Uh, and that baby step we felt was really important because it had the potential to bring aviation home, to bring it to your house, to put it in your garage. 
And it has the potential to inspire people to go out and learn something new, learn a new skill. So that was a lot of the, the personal motivation uh, for starting Terrafugia. The company was incorporated back in 2006. Uh, the business plan was actually the runner-up in the 2006 MIT 100K business plan competition. Um, that came with a nice $10,000 check. Earlier that year, my technical concept had won a $30,000 prize uh, for invention. So we used that $40,000 and we took our newly incorporated company with an idea that we had for making a flying car to the biggest trade show in all of general aviation, AirVenture Oshkosh. Happens once a year, one week long, in the middle of the summer in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Half a million people go to this show. Over 10,000 airplanes fly into this uh, one event every year. We went to that show and we told people about what we wanted to do and our approach to the problem. And we walked away from that first show. All we had at that point was a wind tunnel model and some nice computer graphics. We walked away from that show with seven checks in hand from customers who wanted to buy a vehicle. To us, that was a really positive sign that, okay, if we keep going down this path, there's gonna be a market there. Even if it starts as a small market for pilots, there's gonna be a market. We're gonna be able to figure out how to grow this venture in the long run. Took us another six months to pull together our first round of external investment. Many of those investors in the picture there on the lower right, we met actually at that show and through our MIT connections. And we moved into a small 3,800 square foot garage in Woburn. And we started building, designing and building the highest risk component of our vehicle, the folding wing mechanism. The next year we went back to that show and we showed that folding me wing mechanism just on a stand in our booth and we demonstrated how the wings fold and unfold and we cycled the wing about 500 times at the show, um, showing folks that yes, we could make this, there's nothing impossible, you know, military aircraft fold their wings all the time, we can do it too in personal aviation and you could have one, uh, a vehicle like this in your garage. And we started building a proof of concept vehicle. This was gonna be our first prototype vehicle that was designed to fly and drive. And the thing that's really unique about the transition is not only is it designed to fly and drive, but it can convert between flying and driving in less than one minute. So it's sort of like putting the top down on a convertible. So just like pulling over to the side of the road, in our case, you punch in a personal identification number so, it's, so we know it's you, and then you push a couple buttons and the wings fold up. We had a Series A financing that was lined up to close the second week of October in 2008. For those of you who remember what happened in October of 2008, you'll understand why that financing did not close. Um, in fact, we were within a week of closing our doors and, and basically having to lay everybody off. Um, fortunately, we had a group of investors who are true angel investors and who were willing to do another bridge round financing, give us some more time to get the plane into the air. And uh, with the hope that once we did that, we would be able to continue to pull together uh, more investment and keep the company going. So with that bridge financing in hand, we moved into early 2009, where for the first time on March 5th, 2009, we were able to get our wheels off the ground and uh, I wanna share with you folks uh, a video that actually we've never shared publicly before. Um, the video that I'm about to show is taken from a pickup truck that was chasing the, this proof of concept transition down the runway in Plattsburgh, New York for that first flight. So let's see if we can. 1028. That call down, three, two, one, roll. That's coming from a chase airplane that's coming in on a final approach. Three, two, one, roll. Phil releases the brakes, Phil's our test pilot, and he starts accelerating down the runway. He's got a really long takeoff roll on this first flight because he's making sure that everything is stable as he gets higher and higher in speed. And you'll hear Sam in the pickup truck counting down the runway remaining markers 
as we're going on here. Nine, 9,000 feet remaining. Eight, nine, and once he gets to about 5,500 feet, Phil's supposed to pull back on the stick. Seven. The thing that makes this really exciting for the guys is the last time we tried to do this, it didn't work. Six. You see why? Oh my God! This was not the professionally edited video that we uh, that we released after the fact. Yes. <laughs> Drive around. All right, let's do this right. Yeah. So welcome back, yes. Phil. So we were pretty excited. <laughs> So we took the momentum that we got from that first flight, and uh, it did attract a lot more interest in the company. We got a, a, a new round of investment, and we learned a lot from that pr first proof of concept. So we had a bunch of things about the design that we wanted to improve. Um, we did that, and we built a second prototype, which we've been flying now for the past one and a half years. Um, this is a picture of the second generation prototype. And the thing that's truly amazing to me about this whole idea of a flying car is how much it captures people's imagination. How much, you know, it's so ingrained in the popular culture that it's almost, it's, it's almost a joke, the flying car. Why isn't it here? I don't know. From my perspective, it's ridiculous that it's not here. I don't, I can't, it's hard for me to believe that nobody's done this before. Um, I mean, the, the picture in the lower right there is from the, uh, the New York International Auto Show. We went to that show, and we'll go to an aviation show, and we may come away with maybe a couple dozen serious customers who are really thinking about buying one of these vehicles. We went to that show, and we walked away with 250 qualified leads. That was mind-blowing for us. That This is something that has the potential not only to be useful for pilots, but it's going to attract a lot of new people into general aviation. Um, super exciting. Um, we started doing demos for our investors and customers and doing more aggressive drive, tra uh, drive testing up at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Um, this is a, we've grown the company significantly. Um, we now have, I think, 23, 24 employees, um, and we're starting to prepare for production. Uh, the, the picture in the, the lower right there is our new testing machine that we're using to qualify all of our materials uh, and our processes for our quality program for production. Um, and then, actually, I just threw these pictures in at the last minute because we just were up flight testing two weeks ago, and I just loved the pictures of you know, the vehicle, especially the one on the right, where Phil is just dancing among the clouds. And that, that's, that's doable. And you can do this. Uh, it, it is possible to do this. Um, The transition is probably about two years away from getting into production, and it's going to be a low-volume production initially. Um, but what we're really excited about now is as we're wrapping up our certification program uh, and preparing to get into volume production, we're starting to look ahead, okay, to what's the next step in the process of making the flying car accessible to a much broader segment of the population? And in order to get our heads around that, we said, well, where do we want to go in the distant future? What do we want to do? Well, we want to make a vehicle that basically is kind of like the Jetsons, that is something that could be a big part of the average person's life. We need, but there are a few things that it needs to do. It needs to be safer than driving today. That's a huge thing. It's got to be safer. It's got to be faster. And it's got to be sustainable. It's got to be something that we can count on in the long run. And modern technology, and, and just actually since we started the company, since we started TerraFuji back in 2006, battery technology and electric motor technology have come along so far 
that this vehicle is actually designed to be an electric, plug-in electric hybrid flying car. A key part of the TFX concept is that you don't need a runway. You don't need to learn how to become a pilot in order to safely operate this vehicle with a higher level of safety than an experienced pilot would have in a general aviation airplane today. We use the extremely high power density of battery motor technology today to get up to speed very quickly, to get up to a very high speed, and to enable vertical takeoff and vertical landing. Basically is the Jetsons, only it's uh, not exactly science fiction. And one of the, the things that I get asked a lot is, well, if you have vertical takeoff and landing, why do you need to be able to drive? Um, and this is something that is, is not very intuitive uh, for folks who are not pilots. If you're a pilot, the biggest problem that you have if you want to go flying somewhere is what's the weather like? And if the weather is no good when you want to get back or when you want to leave, you're stuck. That's why you need the ability to drive. If we're going to replace cars in the long run, it needs to be better. You need to not be compromising your freedom, not be compromising when you can get where you want to go. Um, has to drive like a normal car, has to carry a family. Our first product doesn't seat four people for regulatory reasons. Uh, and it needs to be an electric propulsion vehicle. It has to have a high degree of what's called human-directed local autonomy. So it's not exactly the robotic stuff that we saw this morning, but very similar, where you could get in the vehicle, tell it where you want to go. It autonomously plans a flight to the destination landing zone, pre-approved landing zone nearest your uh, desired final location. You plug in alternate airports in case that one's not safe to land at, pre-approved before you leave the ground. And once you do actually get to where you want to go, the vehicle lands itself, you drive right to the door of where you want to be. Safer, faster, more convenient, and more sustainable personal transportation. So in the end, what we're trying to do at TerraFugia is turn the flying car into a reality. So, thank you very much. That concludes the talk.